Hey guys, my name is Wildcard. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for subscribing and following my content. I really do appreciate it. Uh, big shout out to my Pace member, uh, Coops. He's the only one that's being so pay me so at the moment. He's uh, the one and only coffee fund goes into straight to the coffees. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, man, for supporting my channel. Uh, if you would like to chip into the coffee fund, just hit the join button down below uh, and then just click whatever, whichever one you are comfortable with. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, thank you for support and thank you for watching. Now, it's Tuesday and you know what it is. It's news day. Let's have a look at what's been happening in the world of a union. Uh, get your coffee and popcorn now, okay? Before I start, okay, there's some bad news uh, coming out of like Australian rugby. And if you're just an Australian rugby fan, you watch the reading news of Australian website, you won't see this. But yeah, there's some pretty embarrassing news. I don't want to go too much into it because YouTube could potentially ban me for talking about this. And it could be like the algorithm could pick it up and ban me for it. So I'm just going to quickly go through. One of the executives in Australia just got fired for, for, for uh, yeah, for child abuse, essentially. Um... Long story short, he has some stuff on his computer that's illegal. And if you want to read more into it, go read into it. It's um, pretty, pretty embarrassing, pretty bad. And uh, yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it. Let's move on to the, uh, to the game of the weekend. First up, Wallabies once again toppled the world champions in the second match in the rugby championship. And this match was convincingly won by the Wallabies. Everything the Springboks did that was... Uh, really, really good last week. Wallabies clearly came in with a game, game plan to neutralize all the all the scrums, all the lineouts. Came in with a, 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 a strategy to neutralize the kicking, and yeah, and resulted in the Springboks getting convincingly beaten in in the second match, thirty points to seventeen. And there's really not much to say about that. It's just good game. Um, the Springboks are only able to muster one try, so the Wallabies mustered four. Uh, bonus point win for the Wallabies, and the Springboks basically rely, one of the strategy with the bomb squad is to rely heavily on the four pack to earn those penalties, to earn those, um, to earn those, um, uh, like, uh, line outs, get those mores for the tries. Uh, the Wallabies has been spectacular defending the mores, so the Springboks weren't able to score any points from the mall. and also the Wallabies did still have a little bit of discipline issues, so giving away a bit too many penalties in the in the match. So 17 penalties to 10, so it's still a bit too much. However, the overall the Springbok strategy, the extra bomb score member weren't being very weren't that impactful on the field. Polas kicking did improve from last week. However, his tackling was really really poor this week. Uh, overall, the South African defense was probably the one the one thing that really let them down. The amount of missed tackles they made in this game was by far the worst I've seen in many, many years uh, since before the Rugby World Cup in 2019, in fact. So the Springboks missed 19 tackles out of only 50. Uh, and also the fact that it's only 50 tackles made means that there were so many times where they just simply, no one was even there to make the tackle. That's And it didn't even count as a tackle or a missed tackle because nobody was there to make it. So that is really, really poor. Uh, 50 to 19... Uh, so nine, that's already worse enough, but the fact that the count is so low, yeah, it means that there were tackles that were just no one even there to make it in the first place. So it's not even a tackle or a missed tackle. Uh, so it's really poor. That's probably what led the Springboks down to a lot of these points. And uh, yeah, uh, for the first time, uh, for the first time in many, many years, the Springboks dropped from their number one position to number two. Thanks to Australia, uh, New Zealand, the All Blacks, it's now back in the throne of the rugby world. As it should be, I guess. Um, so the overall rankings for the rugby world is that now New Zealand's at number one, South Africa losing another one point or so, dropped down to number two. Uh, this will set up a really big match this weekend for the 100th test, test, test match between New Zealand and South Africa. Australia skyrocketed from fifth to third after winning another two points. And the Rugby World Rankings is finally back to the way you should be with the Southerners in the top three and the rest of the boring Northerners down below, okay? Maybe we're going we're gonna to have to work a little bit harder to get Argentina, our boy Argentina, up to the fourth place because uh, these stupid, boring Northerners 
They don't deserve to be here. They should all be further down below. And hopefully we can get Argentina up to the fourth. And, you know, as the way you should be, the northerners down below the southerners, okay? Uh, so finally, we're back at top. Uh, congratulations to everyone in rugby championships. We did this as a uh, cohesive unit and uh, by hiding points to uh, amongst ourselves. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this world rankings happened. So uh, again, uh, thanks to Australia for helping the All Blacks win, make it to the top once again. Uh, so All Blacks also beaten Argentina with a pretty convincing win once again. Uh, this time the All Blacks did have a did let in a few points with penalties that was kickable range. Did have one try that was scored with a nice crossfield kick. Uh, so the All Blacks did show a little bit of vulnerability out of this Argentinian match. But overall, uh, in the second half, however, Argentina did have a lot of dominance. But overall, the All Blacks defense was too good for the Argentina to really do anything meaningful to uh, put the squeeze on the All Blacks. However, yeah, All Blacks did look a bit vulnerable than, they, than the invincible unit that they've been looking at the week before. But they did make big changes across the board in their four packs, in the backs. Uh, so it's pretty much like the reserve reserve team uh, to be not to be too, you know, uh, not to be too disrespectful. But yeah, it is, you know, one, you know, players that are off the bench uh, starting in this game. So yeah, 36 13, big win again for the All Blacks. Uh, two tries for Vai. Uh, Takiyaho getting his first try for the All Blacks, I believe, or maybe the second one. I think he had a one before in the more. Uh, nice one on the win. Pianara gets the try, and Tui Pulotu. Hattrick Pulotu gets a try as well. Uh, uh, Jordi Barrow was the one doing the call to kick him. A pretty, pretty spot on. I think he missed one. He did miss one out of the all the kicking that he did. Uh, for the Argentinians, Bofeli, the fullback, he was doing, uh, the winger, sorry, the number 11, who was doing all the kicking, and he scored the only try on the field as well. So the one that, the guy that scored all the points for the All Blacks for the week. Now, the post-match interviews, I had a quick look. Uh, there's not much, really much to see for the, for the all-back one. So the only thing that's interesting out of this one is, uh, I guess, this, this uh, what are you seeing right here? This is the only, this is, is the, mo the most important part of the whole interview that Adi Safiya has, you know, uh, accepted Fozzie as his, uh, uh, as his adopted father. And uh, uh, Fozzie is just, uh, you know, looking, uh, looking like, uh, like a, <laughs> uh, it's just an old, old dad that uh, his son is looking after. Uh, he's falling asleep in his own interview. Uh, but that's actually, he's not actually falling asleep. He's just looking down at his computer. But you know, uh, uh, just the way Adi has his arm around him. <laughs> really looks like, you know, uh, yeah, he's just, you know, father and son. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway uh, for the Springbok interview, the big one came out is that uh, the coach, Jaco Johan, like publicly apologized, made an apology to the Springboks fans um, for the loss. So yeah, this was pretty hard for the Springboks. Um, and really they have to, it's, their defense was really, really poor. And uh, Jaco Johan uh, acknowledges that. And uh, yeah, so go watch this one. This was a little bit tough to, to watch. Um, yeah, so a lot of attacking. Uh, for the Wallabies, uh, they lost once again. Um, as you can see, Hooper is never happy. <laughs> like, Hooper, whether you win or lose, has the same grumpy face every interview, okay? We won this game. Uh, he's always, uh, last week as well. So many of you guys may have seen the last week's interview, uh, where the thumbnail had Hooper f smiling. Uh, and trust me, I would not watch the interview last week. The thumbnail where Hooper was smiling is literally the only second that he smiled through the entire interview. And this week, he didn't even smile, okay? He didn't even give that one second of smile for the thumbnail, okay? So he's just been grumpy the whole game. So I assume we lost again, uh, looking at the way Hooper's looking. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is uh, another interview. You could go have a watch. And then the Argentinian interview was a bit, again, um, they lost again. But I do real, uh, so if you do watch this interview, you might notice that they keep asking the, 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 uh, the, 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 the common, the, not commentary, what do you call it? The, uh, the, what is it? The journalist that was giving the questions seemed to have watched, watched South Africa play Australia and not watch this game. Because 
like, I kid you not, a bunch of those questions were directed at uh, Ledesma, uh, Ledesma about Australia. Uh, Ledesma's just like, uh, okay, I, like, it's literally like, how impressed are you with Karevi's performance? And Ledesma was literally like, pretty sure I played New Zealand who didn't play Australia. Uh, okay, whatever. Like, it was just, I thought it was pretty embarrassing for the journalists to keep asking about Australia's performance. Uh, it, d despite the fact that, you know, this should be about Argentina and New Zealand with this interview. So, yeah, shame on you journalists. Get, get, make sure you watch the right games before you go into these interviews, okay? Literally asking wrong questions to the coach, to the coach. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's... Before, I mean, the Argentinians played after Australia versus New Zealand. Pretty sure he hasn't even watched the game. Before, uh, what do you think uh, Ledesma is going to be sitting there watching Australia playing, playing, uh, playing South Africa uh, an hour before they're about to play New Zealand? I don't think so. I don't think so. He's probably in the changing room trying to figure out how to play against New Zealand. And he just doesn't even watch the game. And yet this, into, this, this stupid journalist... Keeps asking him about, oh, how did I, how did, what do you think about Australia's performance? Oh, what do you think about Karevi's performance? Oh, it was just, it was actually quite embarrassing. Go watch this if you want to see some embarrassing journalism. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, so some more fallout from the from the uh, games. Jasper Visa gets cited for um, for shoulder charge to, um, to, I think it was Karevi in the head in the rock. So yeah, that was a late. Late entry into the rock after the referee's gory blown the whistle, and he managed to smack. Uh, what, 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 you know, although accidentally, uh, it, shoulder to head to Karevi, so he's been cited. It's gonna go to a hearing, um, for and 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 under the current framework, he he only got a yellow card for this. Under the current framework, he should have been red carded. So yeah, we should see how that turns out for Yasper Visa, uh, and then, um. Maybe just get the other one as well. So the Wallabies also had a a, a yellow card that was could have been argued for a red as well. So a lot of fans were saying like this was a controversial yellow. So basically, Lockie Swinton got a yellow card. It was like a shoulder to shoulder, like like you can see in the picture here, shoulder to shoulder clash, and then the head clouded afterwards. So um, so this was under the current framework is a yellow card. So head collide like. Swinton uh, shoulder to shoulder with no arms wrapping around uh, and then head colliding is yellow card at minimum so and it could have been a red as well because uh, head collisions does count like if you're high and you manage to put yourself in a position for a head collision could be a red card there has been precedents that happened earlier this year where it's red card head collisions two players colliding head collisions red card so this is definitely yellow so a lot, a lot of fans filming about this not even being a yellow but this is definitely yellow whether it's a red or not, it could be argued. But yeah, this was... Uh, um, Dave Rainey was on to Swinton after this, saying that Swinton needs to be better. Basically, you need to get lower. Like, you can't go in high like that, which is true. Uh, under the current... You can't really say much. This is the framework that the rugby... Uh, World Rugby is working under. So there's not much to say to, to defend this. It, it, that's that's just the law. And if you basically have to get lower for yourself. So... Uh, Swinton, I think, I think in my opinion, could have been red and got really, really lucky for a yellow. There was a bit of weird situation where the TMO, the referee was going to give it a red and then TMO talked the referee out of the red to drop it down to a yellow. So it was a weird situation there as well. Uh, a bit of, bit of, um, yeah, a bit of weird stuff happening. Uh, some news from, from South Africa this weekend. 100th test match for the Springboks and the, the New Zealand for the number one spot in the Rugby World Rankings. But uh, at the end, also 100th test match. So the fitness coming out of the uh, the Springbox camp is that Lou Diega had a net head knock last week. Is fit to play uh, New Zealand next weekend. But Chesel and Kobe, the most devastating player and a lot of the yeah the biggest, uh, the most, I guess the most impactful player in the Springbox team is still not fit to play. At least for the first game for the meantime. Um, so Andre Pollard. Um, criticized Australia for, criticized Australia for, um, uh, for basically, uh, apparently training dirty tactics in the breakdowns, uh, or in, 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 in certain areas that affects the kicking. So he says, yeah, uh, 
suggest that Australia use the illegal off the ball tactics, uh, i.e., placing players between the South African kicker and the kick chasers to disrupt their game plan. So he says, uh, he, he's so so Hundred Pollo is, is complaining about this. Okay, um, Matt Phillip. So so it's true. This probably did happen. Matt Phillip from the kickoff did do exactly this. Where he blatantly stepped in front of a spring ball player and blocked and got penalized. So definitely Australia definitely did do this. And Australia definitely did get penalized for this. Uh, Matt Phillip did this and got penalized like a minute into the game. I remembered it and I was like, that's stupid. So maybe he's right onto something about Australia training to do something like this to block the chases from being able to get to the ball. But uh, Hundred Pollard, last time I checked, you are the worst defender in the Springbok team, including missing two tackles that led to two tries for the Australians. Um, maybe you should learn how to tackle before you talk about underhanded tactics. Um, yeah, you know, something something to think about, Andre. Maybe you should learn how to tackle. So he was literally criticized, in not criticized, but indirectly criticized in a sense, asked uh, at this interview where he talked about, uh, go watch it, it's here, where he talked about, you know, underhanded tactics about Australians. Um, he was literally asked directly that, do you think tackling, the question was something like, uh, tackling is a attitude, you know, attitude, mental, like attitude issue. It's like making a tackle, is a, it's all about having the right attitude. And he was asked, do you think that, there's so many missed tackles this team. It's a, something to do with the attitude issue. So someone was, this this guy was literally, a South African reporter, by the way, literally directly questioning whether Polo has the bad, wrong attitude for not making those tackles that led to the Australian tries. And Hunter Polo's like, nah, not really, nah, nah. Uh, it's, uh, we lost because the Australians underhanded tactics, mate. Uh. Nice, it's more like, um, uh, with the South Africa, it's more like, uh, lekker, 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 kicking, lekker, lekker, Australian axe, lekker, lekker. That's probably what he said. But anyway, go watch it. Uh, lekker. Anyway, um, so, so yeah, Hundred Pollard was pretty much under the pumps again this week for missing tackles, basically. Uh, and then the, uh, so just a, a bit of update on the rules. I want to talk about this because the rules has been changed that now we have the 50-22 and the goal line dropout. So I am not even 100% sure what's so like 50 22 is a little bit easy to understand. If you kick the ball out from inside your own half and it goes out of the opposition, uh, inside the opposition 22, provided it hit the ground, you get the ball back for the line out throw. So it's like the rugby league 40 20 20. But the goal line dropout was a little bit like iffy. I'm not sure when is a goal line dropout, when is it not. So it looks a bit iffy. So, so the only thing you have to know is that. The only time it's a five meter scrum is that if the defending team takes the ball, runs it back in field, or runs it back into the dead, in the dead ball zone at line, and the ball gets, uh, hang on, uh, so only time it's a line out is if the ball is run into the dead ball area by the defending team, and then the ball is grounded or taken out line out. So that's a five meter line, uh, five meter scrum. So it says yeah. Uh, so you all depends who, who's who. Put the ball in goal first, right? So if the uh, it's a f if the defending team has taken the ball over the goal line, or whether it goes out or it's grounded, it's a scrum. In every other situation, when the ball is put into the into the into the de uh, into the try try zone into the goal area, whether it's being held up, or whether it's being kicked out, or whether it's uh, in whatever situation, in every other situation when the ball goes over the uh, dead ball uh, into not the dead ball into the try line. And it's not a try, it's a goal and dropout. Basically, that's the explanation. So just something for, for us to understand a little bit. Uh, and then for the Wallabies, Tom Banks got a knock out of the game. Uh, not a knock, he had a, I think he had a broken arm. So James O'Connor could be back at 15 again. James O'Connor was fit to play last week, but he wasn't selected. Uh, so he could be back playing against uh, the Pumas this weekend at number 15 with the Prodigy duo. Of Quay Cooper and O'Connor. This is uh This is like uh <laughs> 2011 again for us. Uh O'Connor at 15, Quota 10. Yeah, uh really, really interesting. Uh so Daniel Tupo has some really good hands in the rock. Go have a look at this one. Some really beautiful passes. 
77 minutes in on the field for a tight head prop. Super, super man effort. By the way, in case you're wondering, why do they call him the Tongan Thor? Okay, not because he has, uh, you know, the athleticism and the strength of a Norse demigod. No, 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 not because he's that. He's still got a long way to go for his athletic abilities to improve, right? So he still has a long way to go. Not quite there yet. But the reason they call him the Tongan Thor is because he's a ridiculously handsome. Look at this. Look at this physical specimen. Look how handsome he is. He's just the most handsome player in the Wallabies team. That's why they call him the Tongan Thor. So go watch this. This was uh, something that you wouldn't expect from Tide Prop. Quite a bit of highlight. Uh, Sean McMahon returns for the Wallaby team. He's expected to play this weekend. So yeah, that's uh, something, a bit more update from the Wallabies camp. Uh, so outside of the Super, uh, this rugby championship now, Dan Carter is hinting a comeback, potentially playing in some of the minor leagues. So there's some like world, um, like 12, world rugby 12 tournament that's coming up that Carter is, yeah, newly proposed world 12s competition. So he could potentially be playing again we shall see uh so with matt Guido in the mix and uh, yeah we shall see how that goes but it would be nice to see dan carter play a lot of us have fond and unfond memories for dan carter but it'll be nice to see the greatest halfback a fullback not halfback no fly half five eight to play again uh, in rugby and uh uh, so Adam Ashley Cooper similarly returns to play, potentially playing in Australia to finish off his career. How old is he now? 40? But he's getting close to that, 39, 40. But yeah, Adam Ashley Cooper, one of the greatest Australian wingers, is back to finish off his career in Australia. Something for us fans. So obviously, the big match coming up this weekend, 100th test between the All Blacks and the Springboks played in Townsville. Uh, obviously, if they played in Brisbane, there are there were so so many tickets that the Australian rugby could make too much money that they don't know what to they, they're actually not sure what to do with it. So they're obviously scared to make too much money. Uh, so they this game is played in uh, Townsville, uh, in North Queensland. So yeah, we should have a look at re preview for this game. We'll come up later on this week in the channel. But I do think that it's gonna be this was in the afternoon. I saw this will be the first game of the double header be before Australia playing. Uh, before Australia plays, I'm pretty sure it's before Australia play it's, um, Argentina. So it's going to be pretty hot in the afternoon. So we'll just see how it goes. And obviously the biggest question, everybody wants to know, which Haka is going to be? Is it going to be Kampao Pango? Or is it going to be Kamate? For the 100th test match. We shall see. But I think it's going to be, yeah, we shall see. We shall see which one it is. Could be Kampao Pango actually. We shall see. And this is the first time the two teams have played each other since... The pool stage of the 2019 World Cup. So quite a couple of years now since the world champions have played the um, the All Blacks. So yeah, so the Springboks looking at making massive changes across the board to fix their very poor performance. Uh, Jack Johan has a lot of work to do. Yep. Um, so if post post rugby championship. The spring tour will happen. Wallabies will travel overseas to, to the Northern Hemisphere to play some of the Northerner teams. Uh, and they've confirmed to play Japan! Nippon! Uh, and then the, the, the uh, yeah. So that'll be very exciting to see. I really wanted to see Japan to play Wallabies. Japan had a pretty good outing in the Europe in July. Played the Lions. Uh, some really, really spectacular, like, flashy plays from the Japanese. But... You know, just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I support Japan, okay? Okay? The only one I do support, the only player I like in the Japanese team actually is Himeno-san! The big number eight from, plays for the Chiefs. Uh, so he's probably the only one I like from the Japanese team. But it'll be good to see that Japan playing Wallabies uh, in the Spring Tour. Oh, no, yeah, Spring Tour, yeah. Uh, that is the news. Oh, yeah, so last week, uh, my bad guys, I forgot to report this, but USA actually in Canada. Oh wait, that's not last week. This is like ages ago. But last um, last week, US. So Canada beat US the week before. Uh, so the week before. So in the second round, it doesn't even say. Oh my god, this is embarrassing. But in the second round of the game, uh, USA returned the match 
in the return match, USA beat Canada 38 16. Uh, and actually, over like, so, so it's about point differentiation. So, in the first game, Canada was up by 14 points or 16 points. So, this game actually exceeded that the Canada's um, advantage going into this game of 14 points or 16 points. So, the America is it's going to be qualified for the World Cup, and Canada has to go through like the another like southern like south american region or something to be able to get through so yeah big upset canada in the first week but they're not able to hold on to their lead uh america came back and beat in canada so that's some news from two weeks ago so my bad for missing out this one and uh yeah that is the that is the news for the week guys thank you for watching um let me know your thoughts in the comments down below like comment subscribe and uh, I'll see you a bit later this week for the preview of the 100th test match between the Springboks and the All Blacks. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.